Hey, how's it going everyone? Michael back with another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a list in SharePoint. So if you haven't subscribed, feel free to subscribe. I make videos on SharePoint, Power Automate, uh, Microsoft Forms, Microsoft Teams, all the uh, Microsoft 365 software applications. I plan on making videos about them. So to get started in this video, I realized I didn't make a video on creating lists yet. So let's get into it. So you want to go to your SharePoint page and you actually if you're able to have access to create list, you click on this new button right here and you'll be able to see a list right here. Uh, you do need the permission levels to be able to do that. Visitors to your site probably won't be able to make lists, but as long as you got edit permissions and everything, you should be good to go. So let me create the list. And so we get brought a pop-up screen right here. So we can create a blank list, which I will be doing. You can import one from Excel. Sometimes this can be buggy. Sometimes SharePoint will be like uh, the format is incorrect. So if you want to import Excel, uh, be sure the format in your Excel sheet is pretty, pretty formatted correctly. So you got the right data types and the columns and everything. If you want to do it from exist, an existing list. So let's say on another SharePoint, I have a list and I pretty much want to duplicate it. It'll duplicate all the columns and everything. It won't copy over the data, but it will duplicate all the, um, the columns and fields for you. And also, if you see a template down here that you want to use, so let's say I want to track the travel request, you can actually do this here. Uh, Microsoft actually makes templates for these with columns you can remove, you can add columns, you customize them once the template is added. So it's up to you what you want to do, but I will be doing a blank list in this video. And so I actually want to create a grocery uh, list. So I want to, tr for this test case, I want to track the expenses I'm you doing at the grocery store, let's say. So to track how much I spend. And your test case will probably likely be different. Everyone's got different test cases they need to use this for. To track how much I spend. Okay. And I want to, if you want this option right here, show in site navigation, it will show in this navigation bar. So I'll keep it like that because I want users to be able to access this uh, list easily. Let's go ahead and press create. And as you can see, it created the hyperlink in the navigation bar. All right. So on first glance, we have a blank list in front of us. We have the title. This is default in all SharePoint list. I recommend you just rename this to something. So probably the most primary thing in my list is going to be the food. Um, I'm not going to search this list by price, by date I bought the groceries at. I'll be searching it by the food. So I'll make the food the title. And title is actually a single single line of text. So you can hold 255 characters in this field. After that, um, you'll have to use multiple lines of characters, but for the for the title, make sure it's a column where it's less than 255 characters. So we have a few different options up here. You can create a new item in this list. So right now I wanna add more columns, so I don't wanna do that right now. You can edit in grid view, so it's kind of like editing in Excel. It just makes grid for all the different columns. Uh, you can share this list with uh, other users and, and go through that. You can export this list to Excel and CSV. You can automate this with rules, integrate this with Power App, Power Automate, Power BI. If you want to get really technical and do some crazy stuff with it, that's available. Over here, you have the views. So Microsoft automatically creates an all items view for you. But if you just only wanted to maybe view the, the food and the date, they create a view for that. All right, so let me make some new columns over here. Um, let's say I want a date and time when I bought this item. So date purchased. Date of food purchase. And I don't really need the time, so I'm just going to do... Um, I'm going to leave the include time box on checkmarked. If you want to have a timestamp on it, you can do that. Friendly format, I'll do that because it looks a little cleaner. A default value, I'm not going to do anything. Require that this column contain information. Uh, yes, because I do want to know when the food was purchased. And these other two, 
I don't want to force unique values and add to all content types. Yes. Let's go ahead and click save on that. So we got the date purchased and I also do want the price. So as you can see, if you, when you add a column, there's a few different, there's a lot of, there's actually a lot of different types of fields you can use. I recommend going on um, Google and search in SharePoint lists, list column types, and it'll give you a, I think I believe it's a Microsoft website. It'll give you the documentation of what every single column does, um, all the formalities. So, like I said before, single line of text you can only have up to 255 characters. All these other ones they have uh, specific rules. So I will actually do a number for this. So price of item, price of the item, number. I actually do want this to be the dollar amount. And we want decimal places automatic. There's no default value. Require this column contain information. All right. And we got the food, data purchase, quantity. We can do quantity too, actually. So let's say I got four packs of chicken breast. I can do quantity of items. So let's make a dollar. Actually, it's not a dollar. It is actually just no symbol. Just a regular number. Want this contain information. All right. So we have a simple list, a simple grocery list. And let me start adding some items. So let's say I bought a pack of chicken breast because I do eat actually eat a lot of chicken. <laughs> uh, date of purchase. Let's say I purchased this on Sunday, 522. Uh, price per item. Let's say uh, I paid ten ninety nine a pack, and I bought three packs. So we got a pack of chicken breast purchased on Sunday, ten ninety nine three. Let's say I also did buy some bag of five label bag of jasmine rice. Data purchase. I purchased this the same day. Uh, let me make these lower keys actually. Price item, let's say I paid $6.99 and I only bought one. And let me do avocados. Data purchase. Five twenty two. dollars Say I paid avocados are getting expensive lately. I paid $150 for each. Let's say I bought three. Alright. So we actually have our columns now and we have a few items in our list. So if you wanted to like sort this list, you got different options. So if I want to sort A to Z, I want to filter the list. So let's say I only want to look up, see how the price of chicken breasts went up over time. I'm able to do that since I only have one, I only have one item, but there's a few different options of how you want to sort the list. And if I want to have a group by the food, so I want the uh, list to be grouped by different sections of the food, I can go ahead and do that. And let's say I actually did want to make a view of the group by. I can just go over here to the top right, create new view. So this will actually create a new view of what you're currently looking at. So the group view I'm saying here will be like group by view. And I want this to be shown as a list. And the visibility uh, on default, this will make it a public view. So anyone that has access to this list will be able to see see this view. If you uncheck mark this box, only you will be have the option to be able to see this view. I recommend leaving it on public view if there's a lot of users using this, but if not, it's completely up to you. It looks like that didn't work. Maybe it did. Okay, so it didn't work. So let me go ahead and activate the group by food. And let me save you as the group by view. All right, so now it's saved. Now it worked. If I go back to all items, it will show every single item, no filters or anything. I go to the group by view, it's filtered by the food. So it's a pretty, pretty simple overview of creating SharePoint lists. You can do a lot of this. So another example, if I want to add a calculated view, let's say I want to multiply the price of the item by the quantity of the item to get the total. I can do that with a be a calculated view it's available so yeah right here i can do that then it would just be you know 
the two column names multiply by each other. I'm not going to get into that video. Maybe another video I'll show you calculated fields. But that'll be it for the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it, learning something. If you like the video, feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Um, and yeah, I'll catch you on the next one.